Spider-Man Web of Shadows. You know, there's something about this game that I really like. So, it's not the voice acting, because that's pretty bad. Uh, Spider-Man himself is quite possibly the absolute wimpiest I think I've ever seen him at times. Peter, are you- I'm fine. I'm the same. B but I don't know how to stop this. The graphics, well, they haven't aged as well as I remembered either. And Spider-Man is, of course, left high and dry by big teams like the Avengers, but man, do those black suit combos feel good! So this game is basically the prototype of Spider-Man games. No, I don't mean like, like the first ever Spider-Man game, I mean like the video game prototype. It's, it's that, but with Spider-Man flavor all over it. Because instead of some virus taking over the city, it's just the Venom symbiote. I don't know, it's mutating or, or, or something, so now everyone's getting infected. Everyone's Venom now. To include Spider-Man. So now he's acting all emo and aggressive again, and the player actually gets to choose how he acts at certain parts in the story. Now sure, it's all linear, and nothing really changes except the ending cutscene and what group of side characters help you out. But it does do so much for the flavor of this game. Do you choose to stay as the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man? Or do you succumb to the darkness within and become the not-so-friendly neighborhood Spider-Man? Fortunately, your choices don't impede your skills in any way, so you're free to use red or black suit combos at your leisure. Well, at least until the very end of the game, like the very last fight is where you, you're stuck with one or the other. But it also affects who aids you. If you're red, friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, you get helped by superheroes. You're talking Luke Cage, Moon Knight, and Wolverine, bub. But if you go the other way, you actually get helped by supervillains like Rhino, Electro, and Vulture even. And you know what? I freaking love that. Spider-Man's rogues gallery is one of the greatest in comic books, period. Like, I think only, only in my personal opinion, of course, only Batman has a better rogues gallery. And Spider-Man's is strong enough that just having them as allies in a citywide plague of alien goo not only makes sense, but it helps the world feel a bit more alive if the villains can stop being evil for just two seconds in the face of a greater threat. Even if most of the big name superheroes like the Fantastic Four are conveniently out of town. There's even a scene where Spider-Man tries calling the Fantastic Four for help and just gets voicemailed because they're like in another galaxy or something. You've reached the headquarters of the Fantastic Four. Reed Richards, please. For Project. What about four? Press two. Isn't fantastic? For Mr. Fantastic, press one. Yes. This is the office of Dr. Richards. <laughs> he is away on urgent business in another star system. I do think, though, that it's kind of dumb that Wolverine or Luke Cage refuse to help you if you're kind of leaning evil. Because even if you're favoring your symbiote side up until the very end, you're still trying to save the city and helping innocent people and stuff. It makes sense when the villains don't help you. I don't blame them. They're evil. They're selfish. I don't expect Luke Cage to say, Oh, Spider-Man, you're wearing black right now. I ain't gonna help you. Or Wolverine be like, Hey, bub, yeah, you, you smell like more like Venom than Spider-Man. Yeah, screw you. And he flips you off with like the metal like claw like in the first X-Men movie. Like, I don't expect that from Wolverine, and you know, like he, like he's gonna help you regardless, because he's a superhero. But speaking of good and evil and favoring one side or the other, you do have those two distinct fighting styles I kind of alluded to in the beginning. You've got the classic red and blue Spider-Man outfit, with, or the evil black symbiote suit. The black suit focuses on pure damage, and. AOE strikes just ripping the area apart with collateral damage. You pick up cars, and not just empty cars, you can pick up like occupied cars and throw them and they'll explode in the face of your enemies. You can murder people in this game. And the game says, sure, 
You want to murder people as Spider-Man? Go for it. Classic Spider-Man, though, you got more flashy punches and kicks, and you got, you know, web attacks, so you can web enemies up. Either one is fine. Like, you can play the game either way, or use combinations of both, and the game doesn't, like, really hinder you. If you prefer to use the flashy red combos or the, the powerful black combos, it doesn't matter. You can still beat the game. Either, either way, the combos feel good, and overall, in general, controlling Spider-Man himself isn't that bad. The web swinging, uh, I think, is great. You can even do some, like, extra tricks and stuff in this game that even the new PS4 Spider-Man game, like, there are some features that it does not have compared to Web of Shadows. So that's also pretty cool. Bosses are about what you'd expect from a Spider-Man game about symbiotes taking over the city. You start off with your typical Spidey supervillains, and then you get symbiote versions of the Spider-Man villains, like Symbiote Wolverine, or Symbiote Vulture. And that's pretty cool. You can even rip Wolverine in half if you so choose. And that's awesome. And he's Wolverine, so he'll be fine. I'd also be remiss if I didn't mention that this game clearly feels like, if not an homage at the very least, some kind of direct remake of the old uh, Super Nintendo game Spider-Man Maximum Carnage. Except instead of Carnage being the big bad guy and based off of the comic book Maximum Carnage, it's Venom instead. Because Venom's also just as cool as Carnage. In fact, I would go so far as to say he's way cooler than Carnage. But uh, I'm starting to get off topic here. Overall, I thought the game was uh, pretty fun. I enjoyed playing it. Uh, you know, running up, doing wall-to-wall wall -wall combat against symbiotes is, is always fun. Swinging around the city of Spider-Man never gets old. And overall, like, calling in the supervillains is like this great, you know, Spidey, Vulture, Electro, or whatever tag team. Just mwah! Overall, uh, I would say if you are a fan of Spider-Man, definitely give this game a whirl. Do keep in mind, I do think some aspects of it have not really aged very well, but I think it can, it can still be fun. It could still be fun. So uh, thanks again, guys. My name is Axelon from Enthusiax.com. So thanks again for you know sticking with this video and you know hanging out with me. You know, listening to me talk about Spider-Man rambling and stuff. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, hit that notification icon so that you can be notified every time a new video comes up. And I'll see you guys next time.